Well guys, it's becoming the time of year when an outdoor faucet is gonna come in very handy for us. And believe it or not, this house has absolutely no water outside for us. So what we've been doing when we need a hose outside is we open the front door and we hook a hose directly to the pressure tank. But we're gonna fix that today. And up until a couple weeks ago, I didn't even know that these things right here existed until we went to one of our friend's house and he had just put one of these in. So what this is, is an outdoor faucet that gives you cold water and hot water which is gonna be absolutely awesome and it kind of just blew my mind. So since we were gonna be installing a cold water faucet anyways, we picked one of these up. We're gonna be putting in a hot water and cold water faucet today. We gotta to get one more hole drilled and then we're gonna head over the trailer and we're gonna start looking at our PEX tubing. <laughs> So I have pretty limited knowledge in plumbing, but one of the things I have learned is that there's two different types of PEX. I believe there's only two, but we have PEX type A, and then there's also PEX B. PEX B, you just have like a metal crimp and you can just crimp it to whatever fitting you want. PEX A is a little bit different. So if you want this piece of PEX to fit over that, you actually need to expand this. You slip it over it and then over time, like in a minute, it slowly goes back down to size and it'll give you a nice tight seal on that. And to do that, you need a tool. So this is the tool we bought for the project. The whole entire house is plumbed with PEX A. So we're gonna be using this in the future. And this does one inch, half inch, and three quarter inch. We're gonna start out here with some half inch and we're gonna be putting some fittings on it. They also make battery powered ones of these and Milwaukee makes a really nice one. They're really expensive. I picked this one up on Amazon for pretty cheap. Let's give it a try and let's see how it works. So you gotta put a little grease on it. Leave on there. Okay, that one's done. Slide it over the fitting. Oh no. I didn't do it enough. It's already sticking. Okay. There we go. Perfect. So that's it, and in just a few seconds, this is gonna crimp down really tight on this fitting. And I'm gonna do a few of these outside here, that way we don't have to do them in the crawl space underneath the house. And we're gonna start the pecs with half inch because we have some extra valves in there and those are all half inch. And then this is gonna expand it to a three quarter inch. And then that's what's gonna run out to our outdoor faucet. So we got about four of these we're gonna put together real quick. That's a really cool tool. So where we're gonna be mounting this is where I just drilled these holes and I put it right here because our pressure tank is right there and our hot water heater is also right there. So we're just gonna shove this in there. I've already been underneath, I've taken some measurements. We're pretty close to some electrical and then uh, the next studs over is our propane. But where I'm at right now, it's just gonna go straight through this wood and then it, through some foam insulation in there. So let's see if we can get this through. water or you can do a mix of both have warm water Welcome to the utility room in our bathroom. And one thing pretty cool that was done when this cabin was plumbed is they actually put in two extra valves for us. So we already have a cold water that's not being used and we have a hot water valve back there that's not being used. Those are both half inch. So that's what we've got here. We're gonna expand these and put those on and then we're gonna go to three quarter inch and we're doing that in hopes to get as much flow as we can. Since this is an outdoor faucet and we're gonna be using it like a garden hose, we want a little more pressure. So we're gonna expand these with some expansion sleeves on there. We're gonna put them on and then we're gonna run our three quarter inch pecs straight down. I think I gotta drill one of those holes a little bit bigger and we should be good to go. I thought it shrunk down a lot faster. It actually takes a little while for them to shrink down, huh? Okay, so this one's cold. Let's start with this one. This is 10 foot, so a hot one. Okay, there we go. So I'm just gonna push these down as far as I can get them. And then when we're down there, we'll, we'll pull them down first. All right, cool. This is the crawl space. We're gonna head underneath and do our piping, but I wanted to show you guys something. We've been keeping track of the temperature and the humidity underneath the crawl space here. So it has changed quite a bit since we've been living here. Right now, it's sitting at 54 degrees Fahrenheit and 85% humidity. It's pretty humid. 
Uh, that's one thing we've noticed about this cabin compared to our other one is the humidity. So this one sits directly on the ground on a foundation and it's a lot more humid in this cabin. Our other cabin set up off the ground on piers and it was a lot drier in there. So pretty cool. Nice temperatures down here. It's nice and cool. Let's head underneath. You're just an interesting fella. I'm the jokester, baby. I'm the jokester. Okay. I love that you went to work in your Ugg slippers this morning. I know. Can you see them up here? That's hot water. That's cold water. See, I had to miss this uh, two by 12 right here. And I also had to mix, mix this electrical cord. So we're gonna connect into the faucet outside. We have both of these. One's labeled hot, one's labeled cold. This should be pretty easy. So we're gonna go from half inch, which that is. And then we're gonna go to the three quarter inch, which we just stuck down here. Unfortunately, this is a very tight spot. And I'm gonna try to put some Teflon tape on these also. Make sure we don't have any leaks. In the winter, wasn't it only 60% humidity down here? 59 or something like that? Yeah, yeah. it's because of the moisture, the, it's defro... There's more moisture in the ground, it's not frozen. Thank you. It's been two months since we moved in here and we started keeping all of our food down here. And as far as mice go, we don't really have mice, but we have something called a vole. And it's, it's very similar to a mouse, but it has a short tail. We had one vole down here and I found where it got in and the cat tank came down here and she took care of it. But other than that, we've been perfect. We've been varmint free. So let's get these screwed on. We're getting there. Oh my gosh, I'm getting like an ab workout right now. Nice. Yeah. You're gonna be sculpted by the time you're out of here. So, does that say hot or cold on it? Which one? This one. That says uh, cold. Okay, so that's cold. This is a lot harder to do under here. <laughs> oh, dang it. Where's my expansion sleeve? <laughs> oh, okay, so this one, okay, this is cold, correct? For sure? Okay, I don't wanna put this on the wrong one. All right, let's expand it. And then I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna go under those ones. <laughs> okay, there we go, I got her connected. Yeah, this is, I think this is why if you're an actual plumber and you do this like all the time, they get the battery powered one because this is extra. <sighs> okay, yeah, we got her. Let's head back up and we'll, uh, get the connections hooked up up top and then uh, we'll test her out and check for leaks. You got it, huh? That is a sweet dog if I'd ever seen one. Okay, so we got some extra. It looks like you gotta let that PEX A sit for a little while to fully contract after you expand it. From my research online, when it's colder out like it is, it says it's about 20 minutes. So in the meantime, I'm gonna insulate the cold water pipe that we just put in there. A few weeks ago, we had problems with our pressure tank and some of our pipes sweating when we were running our water for a long time. And we insulated a bunch of the pipes, we put in a drip pan and we fixed the problem. So it's awesome down there now. We have barely any sweating and we're gonna keep it that way. So we're gonna insulate that new cold water pipe we just put in. It gets really hot, it like burn me. So it's high. high. Put it on high, yeah. Well, it looks like we're all sealed up. I used Ariel's blow dryer on one of the fittings up there on the cold water one. I think it was just cold and it took a little longer. I checked underneath, there's no leaks. There's only one thing left to do. Let's go outside and test it. It's gonna be pretty cool to have hot water outside. Here we go. Cold water. Okay, that's not very good pressure. That's not good pressure? That's not that good. I mean, it's decent. That's, oh, there you go. Put both of them. Oh my gosh, you can take a bath in that. Oh, wow. That is nice. You know, I think this cold water one, I got some of that foam slammed in there. You know what I mean? That is hot. That is hot, like too hot to touch. Holy amazing. cow. That is insane. Okay, that is pretty amazing. You might be wondering why you would want a hot water faucet on your house. 
and the possibilities are endless. So one big thing for us is we have a big outdoor laundry machine. So that's gonna be really cool to use this. You can wash your dogs with warm water and also clean up. Uh, if you're cleaning up like paintbrushes or anything or just wanna pressure wash your truck and you wanna use hot water, uh, hot water is a way better job cleaning things up. We also have a concrete project coming up and we need to have an outdoor faucet to do some cleanup. So we'll be using the cold water with that. But this thing is pretty cool. Yeah, this uh, cold water, when I shoved it in the insulation, there we go, there we go. That's cold water. That's pretty good pressure. It's super quick too, you know? We're over on the east side of our house now and I was admiring some buds that are opening up. We have something that we're working on now, which is flashing around the base of our cabin. This is a log cabin and it has an ICF foundation. So it's pretty awesome, but when it was put in, they just didn't put any sort of flashing and it definitely needs it. So we knew that it was on our priority list for this summer, but it kind of got bumped up sooner because our chickens have been pecking at it. I have no idea why they want to peck foam. Um, we've been here for about two months and the chickens have been thankfully able to free range pretty much every day that we're home, which is just awesome. I wasn't expecting that. Um, and I know that may not always be the case with predators, but they have found some interest in some of the spots along the foam and they just peck at it. So we've put some wood, kind of scrap wood around it to keep them from doing that. And we've just got to get this done and then we don't have to worry about it again, which is awesome. Eric picked up the metal not too long ago from like a custom metal shop. We gave him the measurements and it's, it's a really pretty color. It's a brown and it's going to match the deck and look awesome with the red trim. So this is it. This is going to be the foundation flashing for the cabin. Like Errol said, nice brown color to match the deck. And I just went into this metal shop in Fairbanks and it was a super cool place. They'll basically bend the metal however you want it and do in custom lengths. So we did uh, two inches down this way. Then they did three inches this way at a slight angle to deflect water and kind of get it to drain. We did 18 inches all the way down and then they put a little bend on the bottom. So that's folded over. That way you don't have like a sharp corner on the bottom. This project, uh, I don't know how simple it's gonna be or I don't know how, how hard it's gonna be because uh, we've never done it before and we have some issues going on with the cabin. Not everything is aligned perfectly and there's kind of some wood sticking out where it might be an issue. But we're gonna start on the two sides that should be the easiest, the back side, and then the side that Arrow was standing on. Let's grab our metal and we'll head over there. You got an extra, uh, I don't know what they're called. What do you think, Bo? All right, that's up, coming in. Wow. It's so pretty. Dang, that looks good. Oh Holy gorgeous. cow. It's so pretty. Stubborn little nails, huh? I think every two feet is fine. Here goes that one. This one. That makes more sense than to cut it. <laughs> That's what I was saying, because then you don't have to cut it at all. Yeah, you just get no, more metal on there, right? Have this one. That one's a hand. Hey, stop that. They're oh, quaking right aspen. There, maybe, but... Oh, because it's sharp? You could go gear way a little. Yeah, right there. That's, That's right perfect, there. yeah. All right, so actually that wasn't too bad. That took about, I don't know, a little over an hour to do the whole entire cabin. We had one part on like the base plate on the other side of the cabin that I had to shave that down a little bit. It was just kind of cockeyed and sticking out a little bit too far. It looks absolutely amazing. I'm gonna say right now, it's probably not 100% secured. We're gonna have to find something to do with the bottom. Since we just screwed the whole top in, the bottom, 
is not screwed in. So we were thinking that the top would just hold it in. Obviously that's not gonna work. I don't know if we're gonna need to do some sort of adhesive on the bottom, or I think we might have enough concrete that maybe we could do like a screw that would go into concrete and we could uh, fasten the bottom along the bottom like that. But all in all, I'm really happy the way this turned out. The brown looks really good. And tomorrow is going to be another big day for us. We are finally going to be painting our Connex. There's only one dirty part. Looks good. Oh, that looks amazing. It looks finished. Look, she's mad she can't peck. Hey, Eric, there's ants all over these buds. I set an alarm just to come out here and show you this. What time do you think it is right now? The sun has yet to come up, but we are at a very long daylight period. As you can tell, it's uh, very bright out here. I'm gonna go back to bed for a little bit and we will be painting in the morning. I guess it is the morning. We'll be painting soon. We're making some sourdough English muffins and I'm really excited because I haven't ever done these with like sourdough, true sourdough where I let them sit overnight. Um, usually I just use like the discard to make them that day. So these are going to be very sourdough-y English muffins and we're gonna get them on the griddle because we are making eggs Benedict. Get in there. Well, the English muffins are turning out awesome and we're gonna make a hollandaise sauce. We're starting with four egg yolks and we're gonna get these whisking with a little bit of lemon juice. And we're gonna try to get them to double in volume here. All right, we are there. We're gonna use a double boiler now, which is simmering water in a pan. And then you wanna put your pot on top of there out of the water and that's gonna create like steam and it's just gonna heat it up a little bit for us because we don't wanna scramble these eggs. Okay, that's our butter. We're gonna keep whisking this. This is almost done. And then we're gonna put a little bit of cayenne and salt in there. We're almost ready to eat. How many do you want two? I want two, just like not open, do you know what I mean? Just like full. There you have it, Eggs Benedict. I cut my muffins open. Eric doesn't want his cut open, so it's gonna be an awesome breakfast. Wow, full sunshine out here. Mm. Do you approve? I added another English muffin here. This is so good, it's the best. Wow, look at how cubey yours is. I mean, look at that. It's so good. Well, we're gonna be using a paint sprayer for today's project, which is gonna be awesome. It's gonna make this a lot easier for us. Paint sprayers, they do cause a lot of overspray. We learned that last time we used one, our black tundra has now uh, white speckles all over it. So we've got trucks, anything we care about, tractor, very far away from the Connex. I pressure washed the inside of the Connex. I figured I'd do it while we had it all empty, so it's nice and clean in there. And then the whole outside, not the whole outside, but any part where there was bare metal or rust, that has all been primed, so we're all ready to go. Got 
I remember it being way darker than that. Am I just tripping? I don't know. So the color we picked, it's called Espresso Beans yep. with an S. And it's a very <laughs> nice brown color that Ariel picked out for us. And she was kind of going for more of like blending into the forest, not so much as standing out. I did too. Very that nice color. so much lighter than I remember it. Well, you never know until you actually get it on whatever you're painting. I think the plan is I'm going to start off with the paint sprayer. I'm going to get the top of the Connex and the rack that we put in. We're going to paint that also since it was bare metal and we just primed it. And then we'll come down and we'll give Ariel a chance and she's going to hopefully finish off the rest of the Connex for us. And I believe we're going to be doing two coats today. Crazy, but it really appears Looks to be like that. that one. Does it not? There's no way that's that. I don't think the oh machine my gosh. got it right. Yeah, look at that compared to that. Yeah, because when you put it, it Whoa. should dry the same. That's how they do it, sorry. They put it on the card and it should dry the exact put same. Put some on the underground one too. There's no way that's the same. Well, we'll, we'll do a judgment here and we'll see. Right here. Well, we didn't show yeah. them underground. It's not underground either. So I don't know if you can see these, but these are the three colors we were kind of like go contemplating between. And they're quite a bit different. One's a really dark brown, one's a more lighter brown. And then one's like this, it's called underground. It's a little bit more of like a dusty color. And we got the one in the middle, but um, when you put the paint on them, even when it dries, it should really blend into that card. And you can see that it doesn't blend into any of those cards. So I only gave them one card, my guess is. They didn't put the swatch on it, which I thought was a little unusual. Um, my guess is that it's, it's a custom color. I don't know what it is. It's a, yeah, maybe the machine messed up or the numbers didn't. But honestly, like I'm digging it, and I'm sure you Sweet are too. Sweet color, yeah, I like it. Yeah, it, it kind of seems a little more like this one, and we did really like this color too. So it's gonna end up being a little lighter than we were thinking, but I like it. I like it. Let's Do you like the, it? Let's get the, the painter hooked up and let's hit the roof. Heading up. Woo. Okay, let's see if I got enough slack. So tell me what you think. I think it looks like the underground. I'm really perplexed by it because when we were at the store, it took us like an hour to decide and we didn't show anyone the colors. So it's not like we were working with anyone. And I was about 50, 50 split between that underground color and the darker one. We only ever handed them the darker one. Never even said the name of the other paint. They're both bare paints. All three of them are actually. Like I didn't even set the other one down on the counter. There's no other colors in our file like that. So, how it actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the other color that we were thinking about going with, which is really, really weird. I don't understand that at all. Um, when we got home, I was even thinking like, man, I'm, I know that the dark brown is gonna look good, but I really thought that the other tan kind of brown color looked cool too. Still honestly just trying to figure this out in my head how this happened, but I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Normally I'd probably be pretty upset if I opened up the paint and it was a totally different color. <laughs> Try that first time. Are you going the right way? No, you're going on to the wrong thing. Oh, okay. So keep going up. Uh, let's start right there. Okay, this is looking really good. Uh, Eric's gonna do the honors and paint the front of the Connex.
fish in one layer, right? Looks good. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. It's done, huh? Get that one like that. We're using five gallons of paint for this project and we are, we're pretty much halfway done with a really thick coat and we have just under half of the paint left. So I think this should work out perfectly. So we're gonna get the other side of these hinges and then we're gonna start on our second coat. Second layer went great. We actually have probably at least a gallon of leftover paint and we did a really thick coat. We were trying to use up that paint and our hot water faucet outside is already coming handy. So we filled up these buckets with hot water to clean out our paint sprayer and this is making like a huge difference. The paint is just coming right off all this stuff and we're getting everything nice and clean. Oh my gosh, this is, look at that, comes around. We still haven't figured out the paint mystery. I think Eric was mentioning when it was mixed that some of the paint splashed. So we're not certain if that possibly contributed to what's going on, but I will tell you, I'm I'm like so thrilled with the color. Uh, I, I don't think we could have picked a better mess up color at all. And it is really close to this one, but it's not actually spot on. The hue's off just a little bit. It looks awesome though. Eric did a great job. And I just wanna show you a few things. We're gonna go on a little field trip. So our first stop over here is some flowers. Eric actually found these flowers, not me. He found one over there and it's this beautiful purple flower. There's a bunch of them popping up right now. I've never seen them before. I mean, I think I've seen them in a book, but I looked it up and they are Pask flowers. It's spelled P-A-S-Q-U-E. So it's a flower found in like dry meadows, which is exactly what we have here. They're just kind of neat. They're this beautiful velvety purple flower. And I kind of like to learn about the plants of the areas that we live. So we've got different plants in this area that I have to learn about. It's a new friend popping up, huh? Look at her. Oh my gosh, she got on me. Do they bite? I think they do, yeah. This is an ant hill. I'm sure you've seen those before, but uh, we, are, we f are finding that we have a lot of ants here. It probably has a lot to do with the forest and the trees. I know they like the roots and have a relationship with them. So this is like a dry area where there's just a massive amount of ants, I'm assuming. And our chickens have been finding them and just going to town. So I guess that's kind of cool for everybody. So this is our bee waterer or watering little dish with some rocks in it. Eric had mentioned this the other day because when we were cleaning off our Connex, it was really hot. He noticed that the bees were landing over there like they needed water. In the past, we've had them in a bog, so they always had water. But this is a very dry property, which is awesome. But the drawback is the bees don't have water or they have to go pretty far to get it. So since we put this little dish over here, we've been spotting them um, drinking quite a bit of water for that. Looks like the bees are doing good. Bringing in some pollen. That's going to conclude the end of our field trip. So thanks for coming along. Awesome. That thing looks great. Let's take the final little walk around and show you what she looks like. Paint sprayer worked amazing on this project. I couldn't imagine doing this by like a rattle can or with paint brushes. I don't, I just don't think it would have worked. We got awesome coverage and the color just like we wanted is going to kind of blend into the forest. That's where this thing is going to go. It's going to go tucked into the woods over there. It's already been a huge accomplishment for us by moving it over here, getting it jacked up, building the rack, cleaning everything and painting it. But there's still a ton more work to do with this thing. And that's going to be on the next episode. We're going to be moving it. We're going to be cutting down some trees, putting it in its final spot, and we're going to be putting up the solar panels. And we will see you guys on the next one. Which color do you like, shade or not shade? Both looks good. It's completely different. Well, now we got the whole rest of the day.